Hello, my name is Mr Lambshead and I'm going to be talking to you about the History GCSE. I hope that I will cover all the things that you might be interested to know, um, but if I don't cover certain things, please feel free to ask your history teacher or you can contact me. My email address is in the top right hand corner of this screen. I'll keep things brief, but hopefully you will find this informative and hopefully I can persuade you to consider taking history at GCSE. OK, so we should ask the question, why study history? I could probably talk about this for two hours or so, but I'm going to keep it brief and I'm going to break it down into three separate reasons. Okay. The first one is that it is interesting. OK, now I'm biased. I'm a history teacher. We love the subject in the history department, but we feel pretty confident that if you ask our students who take GCSE, we get a lot of people who say how much they enjoy the subject. And we also get a massive uptake for the A-level as well, which I think is a good sign. The other thing to keep in mind, I think, with history is that it informs you about the world. OK, there's a quote here. It says history is who we are and why we are the way we are. I think what that captures is the idea that history can inform us of the way in which the world has um, come about. OK, if you want to understand why the world is the way it is, history gives you that background. OK, you may never have wondered a question about a question like, why is America the most powerful, rich country in the world? You can't really answer that without studying history. Number two, it gives you important skills. OK, now if I show you these skills here, it says questioning, structured writing, debating and presenting and analysis. They might not strike you as incredibly exciting, but what they really boil down to is uh, improving your skills with regards to critical thinking and persuasion. Now, if I can just quickly explain what I mean by that, if you want to navigate the world uh, effectively, you need to be able to question what you're presented with. OK, you need good critical thinking skills so you don't simply take things at face value. And also think about persuasion. What you want to be able to do is to persuade people of your opinion, and persuade people that you are doing the right thing. What history allows you to do is to become very good, become very skilled at persuading people of your position. And thirdly, it can help you to get to where you want. Now, take a look at these careers. Now, they may or may not be of uh, interest to you, but history tends to keep the door open with regards to some of these careers. It says here law, journalism, politics, teaching, civil service, publishing and media. Uh, they're the kind of skills that you learn in history are the kind of skills that these sort of careers demand. And so if they look of any interest to you, then studying history at GCSE might just be the next step you need in order to get there. So the key things about GCSE history. There are five topics studied. I'm going to be going over those in a moment over the next few slides. Uh, there are three exams. They're the OCR exam board and there is no there's no coursework for history at all. OK, now the next few slides, as I just mentioned, um, we're going to look at the topic study. They are what you're going to be doing uh, if you choose to take this GCSE. So it's worth finding out just a little bit more about these five different topics. One of the topics is living under Nazi rule, which covers Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler. This is a topic that we find students are genuinely fascinated by. We look at how a normal functioning country was transformed into a terrifying society that paved the way for the Holocaust. Students will look at the way in which German people were controlled by the Nazis and how Hitler changed the lives of all those who lived there, including uh, children, women and minorities. Another topic is the Norman Conquest, 1065 to 1086. You'll get to explore the Norman invasion of England in 1066 and how England was shaped in ways that still affect the country today. You'll get to look at the impact of castles, uh, the Doomsday Book, and interestingly, how William actually managed to take control of the country, how he used incredible levels of brutality to actually seize control. Another topic that students enjoy is the making of America. 
it looks at the way in which America changed and turned into the world's most dominant power. You may never have wondered why the USA is such a dominant country in the world, but we'll help to answer that question. We look at the settlement of the country and uh, we look at the way in which uh, white Americans impacted upon Native and African Americans. We also focus on a piece of local history to see how that fits in with the bigger story of Britain's history. So we get to look at uh, Buckland Abbey. What we do is we go and visit the place, we have a look around and we begin to understand how what's left behind really paints a picture of how Britain changed over the course of its history. And finally, study of the people's health involves you investigating people's ideas and cures about disease and how these have changed over time. You get to explore how epidemics such as the plague and cholera were dealt with through the different eras. This topic is particularly relevant at the moment given the COVID-19 pandemic and learning how people in the past have dealt with disease holds a mirror up to the ways in which we are handling things. Thank you for watching and listening. I hope I've managed to answer some of the questions you may have, but if you do want any further information, please, like I said at the start, ask your history teacher or you can contact me on the email address there.